Hi, this is Jeff Minter with Automotive Research and Design, and I'm here today with another training segment on hybrid vehicles brought to you by P10 Magazine. During this training segment, we're going to go over the DC to DC converter testing process. We'll talk about some of the different options available, and we'll look at what the test process actually looks like. The DC to DC converter that we'll be taking a look at from a testing process today will be what's known as a buck converter. As a quick review, if you don't remember, a buck converter is simply a converter that will take a higher voltage and step it down to a lower voltage. On the hybrid vehicles, that's what's being used to replace the traditional alternator to both charge the, high volt, or charge the 12 volt battery as well as supply all 12 volt loads. The diagram on the screen here is simply a schematic layout of what this looks like. As you can see, this is actually a, more or less a transformer that will change that voltage. Think of it almost like an ignition coil in reverse. Depending on the manufacturer of the vehicle and the design they chose to use on any particular model and year, you can have a DC to DC converter that's a standalone unit like the one on the left of the screen here from a Ford Escape, or you can have one that's integrated within a lar larger component such as the one on the right side of the screen. That's actually on the bottom side of a Toyota Prius inverter converter assembly. Now sometimes we can actually get some individual components available for these even though they're an integral part of another larger component. In other cases you end up having to replace the whole larger component if you have a failure of that DC to DC converter. Let's take a look at the testing options to check the DC to DC converter for proper operation. In many cases, like anything else in the car, depending on the level of failure, you'll be choosing a different diagnostic technique. The first one we'll take a look at is scan tool. And the scan tool can obviously have several different functions available. One is obviously going to be a trouble code associated with the system. It will also then let us look at some live data PIDs to see if the 12 voltage system is actually receiving a charging level voltage from the DC to DC converter. The next step would be a load test, which will actually then allow us to tell not only is it putting out a voltage, but it will also allow us to tell if it's putting out amperage up to its rated capacity when we put the system under load. And lastly, we'll take a look at a scope. The scope will be used to look at the voltage coming out of that DC to DC converter to ensure that it's consistent, make sure we don't have too much noise, and make sure we don't have any dropouts that may be occurring if we have something that's in an early stage failure. Now you may notice that the scan tool data PID list really does not have a lot to offer us. It just has a few basic things. In this case on this Honda Civic that we had the scan tool on, you can see that the only two data PIDs that it really had related to the DC to DC converter were the output voltage from that as well as the DC to DC converter temperature. All we could really use this for then would be to see if the system voltage is actually coming out at a level that we would expect. And in this case we can see that it's putting out 13.3 volts, which is obviously above the nominal rated of the battery, so the converter is putting something out. Now we still don't know how much, but we know it is putting something out. We can also tell that it's not overheating at this point, which doesn't give us a lot of information, but again that's the only other data pit related to that converter that was in this particular vehicle. Now you'll notice in this case we have a much different result than we had in the last slide. In this case we're only seeing an 11.4 volts being output on the same exact vehicle, showing that the DC to DC converter cannot keep up with the demands of the 12 volt system. So we know not only is the DC to DC converter not necessarily putting out what it's rated for, but we know it's not putting anything out because the system's actually depleting the 12 volt system. If you look further down the screen, you'll notice that there are some codes associated with this as well, showing that the DC to DC converter has actually lost communication with the other control modules on the vehicle, so the DC to DC converter in this case is actually completely inoperative. Load testing this system is just like load testing a traditional alternator for the most part with a few minor variances. We're still going to have this hooked up to the 12 volt battery, with both positive and negative leads from our load tester. We're also going to have to take this amp clamp and connect it around the wire that would feed out of that DC to DC converter. Now ideally we go right where it comes out of the DC to DC converter, but in many cases that just isn't an accessible location. In this case it's underneath the inverter assembly in the engine compartment, so we're going to go right around the cable where it comes into the battery from that DC to DC converter. We'll clamp that around, just like we would a typical 12 volt battery charger then on a regular alternator driven vehicle, we're now going to load this vehicle down. The difference with this is we do not have to have the engine running, nor do we have to worry about changing any RPM levels because this is not being a belt driven generator. This is actually a DC to DC converter that feeds directly off of the high voltage system and has nothing directly to do with the engine movement unless it's where the generator is recharging the high voltage battery to supply the voltage to the
DC to DC converter. So we simply load the system down then. And much like a, a traditional system, we'll load this down around 12, 12 and a half volts and measure the output. In this case, we're getting over 90 amps out of this vehicle. We would then simply compare that to the rating for the vehicle and ensure that the DC to DC converter is doing what it's supposed to do. Using the oscilloscope to check the output of the DC to DC converter is actually not going to be utilized to check the current capabilities. This is going to be utilized to monitor the stability of the voltage output from the DC to DC converter. So we're really looking at the line for the level of the voltage and the consistency and the lack of noise. We want to ensure that that line does not have any dropouts, it doesn't have an excessive amount of noise, especially when we put that under load. So right now the scope is hooked up, the DC to DC converter is active, we're putting out approximately 13 and a half volts, but this system is not yet loaded. We will then load it using a traditional carbon pile load tester, and we'll watch for that line to stay stable as it is right now, without any major changes in the amount of noise or without any dropouts. So as we load this, you'll see that this line stays nice and stable. In this case, this DC to DC converter has the correct amount of output. It simply had a drop down in the output level, but it did not actually have a reduction of the quality of the voltage coming out. Let's do a quick review of the testing processes and what one would be used under what types of failures. The first one would be the scan tool. Typically that's going to be utilized for a gross failure analysis where we already have a light on. Now outside of that, the next most likely thing that we would use would be the carbon pile load tester and we would test the system just like we would a typical alternator system on a traditional vehicle where we'll simply load it down, use an amp clamp to measure the amount of current coming out or that it can put out and ensure that we're actually getting the rated capacity out of this DC to DC converter. The last test, which would be the least likely to be used on a regular basis, would be the oscilloscope check. And this is going to be for those oddball kind of random occurrences where you have a vehicle that you suspect the charging system may be failing under certain conditions but is not failing on a regular basis. This will give you the chance to look for any electrical noise in the system where it's not regulating properly, look for any intermittent dropouts potentially under load, things like that that we couldn't normally see using a typical load test with an amp clamp. Thank you for watching this training segment brought to you by P10 Magazine on DC to DC converter testing. Hopefully you found it useful and you'll join us for other training segments and tech tips in the future.